Hey y'all, my name is Kevin, I'm from Georgia, and today I'm going to plant my single seed challenge. Today is Monday, March 8th, and it is a beautiful day in Warner Robins, Georgia. The cool thing about my seed is that it comes with a story. It was the 1930s in the Great Depression. I got notes over here. A man named Marshall Cletus Biles was a radiator mechanic in Logan, West Virginia. And with the uh, Great Depression getting in motion, he was looking for other sources of income. And he decided to, with no prior knowledge or education on plants, he decided to breed a tomato plant. So over six years using four varieties of tomato plants that he handpicked for their disease resistance and hardiness and flavor including a German Johnson and a beefsteak and two unknown varieties he took six years and bred a tomato and sold the seed seedlings at a dollar a piece in the 1940s that's quite a bit of money back then and people would drive hundreds of miles just to get his seedlings and using that money he was able to pay off his mortgage so the tomato is of course called radiator charlie's mortgage lifter or as we most commonly call it these days just mortgage lifter the seed i'm going to plant is a direct descendant from what Radiator Charlie bred 80 years ago, and I think that's pretty cool. I always love a good story. So I ordered my uh, mortgage lifter tomato seeds, indeterminate type, from uh, Southeast Seed Company, and I believe they're in Florida. So I'm going to take a look at them here and see. I don't know if the dark ones are better than the light ones I'm just gonna take one let's see let's take a look at this one I think that's gonna be the one guys there's my single seed now let's get it ready to go in a pot so for my seed starting mix for tomatoes and peppers and such, I typically just use this. This is a little dollar bag from Dollar Tree, the American seed, the same ones that have the cheap seeds for sale. It's a seed starting potting mix. Mm, sphagnum peat, horticultural vermiculite, perlite, and wetting agent. Just typical seed starting, all you need. I put it in a little bucket, as you can see, I've already got a little bit there, and uh, mix a little water in it, get get it good and moist, and then I'll put it in this little two-inch cube, which is what I prefer for my tomatoes and my pepper plants. That way I can treat each seedling separately if it needs water for some reason and the rest don't. Everybody gets their own little cube. And when I have them in my 10 by 20 tray, I can fit 50 of them in there. And as you can see from all my tomatoes that have already started, how easy it is to just pick one up. Take a good look at them. Yes, I'm about to up pot these probably later today. And then if you need to reorient them because the light's got them leaning one direction or the other, or you need a pusher to the little fan, then you can move them however you need to. I uh, kind of like that. I do still use trays to start some things. My milkweed's coming along good. These peppers right here are not looking too hot. They don't look near as good as the ones I started about well a month earlier these are some heatless habanero and some banana peppers i got from Haas tools they're looking gorgeous and some strawberry plants i got going on 
Well, it's time to get my hands dirty a little bit. I'm going to put some of this water in here with the dirt. And get it nice and, nice and wet. Not, not mud, but good and clumped together. Let me see. <laughs> Maybe how, about how that looks and... That's just about what I want right there. I'm gonna take that, take my little cube here, and load it up. Press it down just enough to make sure there's no air pockets or anything down in the bottom. A little firm, but not too much. Go ahead and get it to a about a half inch, maybe quarter inch to within the top of the cup. Then let me get my, my seed. <laughs> All right, and here we go. My dirt, my seed. I don't know if you can see that there. There he is. All right. Planting the single seed. Today is March 8th, 2021. My last frost is in 20 days, but I'm going to give it a little longer because you know how the last frost can be. <clears throat> Put a little more dirt on top of this guy. About maybe a quarter inch over the top of the seed. Now, these guys tend to germinate pretty quick, so it'll probably just be a couple of days on the heat mat. So I made a little thing to give it a little encouragement to grow my, my plant tag so I know which cube is the single seed challenge mortgage lifter. It'll be kind of hard to miss now in the Hopefully that's not going to interfere with the dome and the germination tray. Let's see. Uh, right now I've got some ground cherries that have been in there over a month and just refuse to germinate. So I think I'm going to give up on the ground cherries. I'm going to take all the seeds left in the pack and put them in one cube and see if any of them germinate. But for now, the mortgage lister is going to go right here on the heat mat. And yeah, the dome's got plenty of clearance. And once they come up, they will join everyone else under the grow light. And once they get big enough like those and repotted, they'll step on down here to the shop lights where they'll spend a couple of weeks before going in the yard. Well, let's hope everything makes it that far. And my little lettuce patch, I, it's looking quite good under the uh, bright days lately. I do believe I'm gonna have to harvest some of that before it bolts. <laughs> but it worked great throughout the winter here in Georgia. Every time it froze, I would cover that with plastic, plug the lights up, kept it nice and toasty. Well, not really toasty, but great for lettuce. Kept it from freezing or getting too wet. And that getting too wet's been a problem this year. Some collards and bunch of onions I've had going all winter. They've done just fine. My overwintered onions over there, as well as some carrots that are eh, not really doing that well couple of big ones maybe just a couple of random lettuce I let grow in there and my freshly planted potato patch which if you look closely you can see some cracks appearing where they're about to break through the ground I'm prepping this area right here for a little pollinator garden uh, 
got some marigolds and some wildflower assortments to just throw out there I'm gonna put some of this cheap topsoil and soil conditioner and manure I'm gonna try and burn a little stuff right there to get rid of all that trash from where I trimmed everything down and there's a stump under there somewhere so it can't really be brought any lower down to the ground just gonna plant a hill of flowers on it This bag of potatoes was just one potato that became all these plants coming up in one bag. I've healed it up twice already. Uh, probably will again. I don't know how long it's been there, but eh, it's an experiment. And my turnips, which do pretty well if I can keep the aphids off of them. If you've enjoyed my video today hit the like button let me know leave a comment give me suggestions criticize what I've said or did I'd love to hear from you and I hope that the rest of you in the Gardner Scott community will do a similar video so we can all get to know one another and share our knowledge and gardening and all that good stuff thanks and I'll keep you all up to date on how my single seed is progressing have a good one.